length is number eight. Danha Pajaya Upadana. <coughs> Danha is thirst or craving, so it is attachment, loba. So when there is loba or danha, attachment, there comes to be what is called upadana. Danha is actually hmm, not so strong attachment and ubadana is that attachment which has become strong. So both dana and ubadana are actually loba, but they differ in their intensity. So dana is not so strong, but ubadana is strong. But not only dana, but but uh, Wrong view is also called uh, Ubadana. The word Ubadana is made up of two parts, Upa and Adana. You are already familiar with the word Adana, because you find this word in Adhinadana. So Adana means hating or getting pulled off. In the word Adhinadana, it means taking what is not given. And the prefix Upa has a meaning of intensity, or strong, or firm. So upadana, when these two words are combined, it becomes upadana. So the word upadana means firm, taking hold of. So that is grasping, or it is also translated as clinging. So Ubadana means um, strong taking hold of something. Here, the strong taking of the object. <coughs> so Danha and Ubadana belong to different moments, not not so, uh, at, at the same moment, Loba is called both Dantna and Upadana. When it is not so strong, it is called Dantna. And then when it becomes strong, late, a, a little later, then it is called Upadana. We, we can grasp at objects not only by attachment or craving, but also by wrong view. Now we, we have some wrong views about things, and once we have taken that view, we cannot mm, let go of it. So it is so strong. So deity or wrong view is also called upadana. The attachment which has developed into grasping is called kamupadana. That means grasping the objects of senses. Now there are objects of senses which are which are the object of loba as well as of grasping. Now you see something which is desirable, uh, which is pleasing to you, 
and then you are attached to it. First attachment, which is not so strong, is tanha. And later on, you are so attached to that object that you cannot let go of it. So that, that is called upadana. So upadana is uh, described uh, by a simile of a snake Mm, swallowing a frog. So when once once it has taken a frog, the snake will never let it go. So in the same way, when it uh, the uh, attachment reaches the stage of ubadana, then it will not let go of the object. And so <coughs> the grasping of um, objects of senses is called Kamupadana. And objects of senses are of five kinds, as you, I think, as you already know, mm, desirable, visible objects, desirable, audible objects, or desirable sounds, desirable smell, desirable taste, and desirable touch. So attachment to and grasping of these objects uh, is called upadana. And the objects that are desirable mean those that are normally desirable and also those that we think are desirable. Sometimes one object may be desirable to one person but it may not be so to another person. The most obvious example is taste of pepper, taste of chili. One will like chili and that taste is for him a desirable object, but for another person it may be quite the, quite the opposite. So when we say desirable object, we mean both and those that are naturally desirable, and also those that we take to be desirable. The, both, of the, uh, both kinds of these objects can be the object of uh, Kamu Bhadana. So when we see something, say, which is desirable, or wh which we think is desirable, first there is uh, there is attachment, not so strong attachment to that object. And then later on, uh, we like it so much that uh, we cannot let that object go. So the, the danha develops into uh, ubadana when the object is desirable. The same with, say, audible objects, sound. You hear a sound first, um, for example, a music, and then first it may be n n not so um, attractive to you, but later on it becomes so attractive to you that you cannot uh, let go of that sound or you want to hear that sound, that music again and again. So when you want to hear it uh, again and again, it is, uh, the, the attachment has developed into uh, grasping. So the same with smell, the smell of a flower, the smell of perfume. At the first instant, uh, the attachment may not be so strong, but later on it will become strong and so develop into grasping. So you like uh, some kind of uh, smell or perfume so that you use it uh, again and again. The same with taste. Okay, some food. <coughs> uh, first there is just the attachment to food and then it may develops into uh, grasping so that you are addicted to or you like 
a kind of food so much that you, you take it again and again. Now here, taste can be taken to mean also in a figurative sense. When you like being uh, treated by another person, as for ex- uh, especially uh, by a person who is dear to you, say you like it. Say for 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 men, say when their wives uh, prepare food for them or prepare their bed for them or say wash their clothes for them, they like it. And so that is also uh, a kind of taste, a kind of rasa. So people are also attached to such um, such treatments. And so in this case also and there is loba and I mean dana and upadana. And also in the case of the sense of touch. So some some kind of touch uh, you like you like uh, more than another kind of touch and so at first there is just a not so strong attachment and then later on it develops into a strong attachment and so when it has become strong attachment it is called upadana <coughs> Visuddhimagga gave us the difference between Dana and Upadana by other teachers. Sometimes when these authors wrote books, and they include the opinion of, of other teachers as well. So here also Visuddhimagga said, other teachers say like this. So what the other teachers said uh, is that the weak loba is dana and strong loba is upadana. And uh, attachment before one gets an object is dana. And attachment after one gets it is upadana. So it is explained as a thief stretching out his hand to take hold of something. So at that time it is dana. Once he has got hold of the object, uh, it is upadana. So once he has taken hold of something, then he will not let it go. And it is said that uh, dana is the opposite of uh, what is called fewness of wants. That means you have not much desire. And upadana is the opposite of what is called hmm, non-contentment, not being content with what one already has. And also it is explained that dhanna is the cause of suffering through searching for the object. And upadana is the cause of suffering through uh, protecting the object. That means when you are attached to something, when you want something, you, 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 you try to take, you try to get that thing. So looking for that thing or trying to get that thing, you have to suffer and so there is suffering. So it is called suffering uh, through trying to get uh, the, the object. After you get the object, there is another suffering that is to protect it. Uh, you have to pro- protect it so that it is not say, t- uh, stolen, it is not mm, damaged by uh, other persons and so on. And so uh, the dhana is the cause of suffering through 
uh, searching for the object, and Ubadana is the cause of suffering, um, protecting that object. So, uh, the, uh, the, this, uh, this difference between Dana and Ubadana is given by other teachers, and Visuddhimagga did not say whether he approved uh, their opinion or not. So since he did not reject their opinion, we can take that uh, that was acceptable to him. Wow. So that is Kamu Padana, grasping of sense objects. Now, wrong view as Ubadana is of three kinds. The first is called Deity Upadana. You know what Deity is? Deity really means a view, but mostly it means wrong view. So here, Deity Upadana means a wrong view about uh, karma and its results. Actually, uh, non-belief in karma and its results is called Deity Upadana. Now, these opinions, once established in one's mind, will not, will not leave. So they are so strong that it is very difficult see, to, to get rid of them. So that is why uh, such opinions are called upadana. If you think or believe that giving or say, offering or the practice of generosity do not bring any results, then you have this kind of wrong view. If you think there are no results of wholesome and unwholesome acts, then you have this kind of uh, wrong view. And if you think that attending to your mother and attending to your father or <coughs> service to your father or mother, respect to your father or mother, um, bring no results, then you have this wrong view. And if you believe or if you think that there is no such thing as another world or another existence or rebirth, then you have this wrong view. And if you believe that there can be no persons uh, who by their own intuitive knowledge understand understand the world, like the Buddhas. If you think there can be no such persons as Buddhas and others, then you have this wrong view. So, this wrong view is described in the, the books as um, ten points wrong view, because there are ten, ten points or ten objects of this wrong view. So in brief, uh, not believing in the law of karma is called Deity Upadhana. <clears throat> now the next one is uh, very important. It is called in Bali Silabhata Upadhana. S I L A B B A T A C Labada <clears throat> There is a lot of misunderstanding about this hmm, grasping because uh, it's very difficult to to accurately translate this word. And the loose translation used for this word always uh, leads to uh, some kind of misunderstanding. 
<coughs> now, the word Silabhata is composed of two words, Sila and Vata, V-A-T-A, V as in victory, V-A-T-A. So Sila and Vata are joined together and when they are joined together, the Pali grammatical rules require that V be changed to B and then B be doubled. So we have the word Silabhata. But if we divide uh, this compound word into its components, we have Sila, one word, and Vata, one word. V-A-T-A. Uh, I'll tell you later. Yeah. <coughs> the word Sila has different meanings. And so it can mean a habit. So, something, some actions which one habitually does, that also is called sila. And as you know, uh, taking precepts and keeping them is also called sila. And vata, vata means uh, practicing what one has undertaken. So, say, you take precepts, and the taking precepts may be called sila, and actually practicing them, and not breaking them, is called vata. So, there is a difference between sila and vata, but in actual practice, they may be understood together. <coughs> Now, during the time of the Buddha, there were people okay, who, who thought that if you act like a dog, or like a cow, or like an animal, you will get free from suffering, you will get emancipation. You know, the, the animals are not so wicked as, say, human beings. And so if you live like an animal, if you act like an animal, then uh, you, you can get rid of mental defilements. This, is, this was a belief held by maybe many people during the time of the Buddha. So these... Mm, Practices were called, say, sila, I mean, undertaking to practice those uh, acts is called sila, and really acting them is called vata. Now, this wrong view is that this sila and vata are the sufficient means for achieving enlightenment. So if you believe them to be uh, the sufficient means for achieving enlightenment, then you have this kind of wrong view. During the time of the Buddha, one day two men came to the Buddha. One was uh, one's name was Punna, and the other's name was Seniya. Now, Punna was a follower of behaving like a cow, and Seniya was a follower of behaving like a dog. So they, they went to the Buddha, and after exchanging greetings with the Buddha, Puna asked uh, a question. Uh, 
saying that Senia uh, was a follower of the behavior of a dog. So he, he sleeps like a dog, he walks like a dog, he eats like a dog. So he, he followed the, all the behavior of a dog. And Pona asked, uh, what result would come out of this act? Then Buddha said, don't ask me. <laughs> but Pona insisted. So the second time he asked the question and Buddha refused again. But when he asked for the third time, Buddha said, now, I, I told you not to ask this question and I could not uh, get you desist uh, from asking. So now I will give you the answer. If a person acts like a dog, play, uh, sleeps like a dog, walks like a dog, eats like a dog, and urinates like a dog, then if he uh, practices uh, that behavior to perfection, then he will uh, be reborn as a dog. And if he uh, did not practice um, to perfection, then he has this wrong view that by this uh, act of following the behavior of a dog, he could get uh, uh, emancipation. So he has this wrong view, and this kind of wrong view leads to rebirth either in hell or in, in, a, in a world of animals. So this kind of practice, if brought, to, uh, if brought to perfection, will lead him to be reborn as a dog, and if he could not bring it to perfection, he will go to hell or an animal kingdom. So when Buddha gave this answer, Senia cried. <laughs> he was so sorry. He said, I cried not because I'm sorry for myself, but I have been deceived by my teachers for a long time. And then Senia asked the same question about Pona to the Buddha. And Buddha refused for two times, and then uh, for the third time, Buddha gave the answer similar to that. So if a person uh, acts uh, like a cow, eats like a cow, sleep, sleeps like a cow, and so on. And if he uh, practices that to perfection, then he will become a cow. And if he does not, then there is the wrong view, and so he will be reborn in hell and animal kingdom. So, uh, uh, this belief that if you act like a cow or act like a, a, a dog or act like other animal, then you, 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 you can get free from mental defilements and you can uh, attain enlightenment, then you have this kind of wrong view, which is here uh, grasping or ubadana. <coughs> Now, you may think that such practices were only in the past and not in these days. But I think there are some people even nowadays who have strange views and who, although they may not live like animals, say they live like primitive people and so on. So whatever the practice is. If you take that practice, which is not um, the practice of Satipatthana and Vipassana, if you take that practice as a sufficient means to enlighten man, then you have this wrong view. So there can be the other kinds of practices like practicing like a uh, like uh, other animals, like a horse, like a like an elephant, or like a bird, like a snake, and so on. So, <clears throat> whatever practice 
uh, it is. If you take this practice to be the means for achieving liberation, then you have this wrong view. And so this wrong view becomes um, grasping or ubadana. <coughs> In the commentary to uh, Visodhimaga, it is stated that even sila, sila as we know it, as um, five precepts, eight precepts, ten precepts, so even sila and jhana practiced as a means for liberation is called silabada. So if you think that you can achieve mm. emancipation, you can achieve enlightenment just by keeping precepts, then you have this wrong view. Even if you have jhana, if you practice jhana as a sufficient means to achieve liberation, then it is also a wrong view. Although you have uh, you have a jhanas, you still have this wrong view. And so, whatever practice other than the practice of mindfulness, practice of vipassana, is not conducive to to the enlightenment. And so, if you take any of those practices to be the way to liberation, then you have this wrong view. According to the teachings of the Buddha, the practice of mindfulness is the only way for the purification of minds of beings and for the attainment of Nibbana. If any practice which is not in conformity with this practice of mindfulness <coughs> is not a, not, a, not a right way. And so if we take uh, any practice other than the Siddhipatthana practice as the way to liberation, then we have this uh, wrong view. Now, Mm. Buddha said the practice of mindfulness is the only way for the purification of minds of beings. And if you look at, at our practice, I think we can accept this without any reservation. Because so long as we are mindful, we can keep unwholesome mental states from, say, entering our minds. But the moment we lose mindfulness, they enter our mind. Sometimes attachment, sometimes dosa, sometimes anger, or sometimes envy, jealousy, and so on. So, when mindfulness is standing guard, at the eye door, we can avoid the unwholesome mental states uh, from entering our minds through the eye door. And we, if we can put the uh, put mindfulness at the uh, door of uh, ear door, then we can avoid unwholesome states from entering into our mind through the ear door and so on. So it is mindful, only mindfulness see, that can prevent <coughs> uh, prevent unwholesome mental states from entering our minds. So it is only uh, mindfulness that can um, purify our minds. And when our minds are purified, then we can achieve uh, Nibbana. So mindfulness is the only way uh, for the achieving of Nibbana.
for the purification of minds of beings. And so, and so any other uh, practice, if we take uh, any other practice to be the, the way to the attainment of Nibbana, then say we are, we are wrong or we have this wrong view. Then what about the Samatha practices? And there are two kinds of meditation, Samatha meditation and Vipassana meditation. Now, if we believe that Samatha meditation alone can lead us to enlightenment, we are still wrong and uh, we still have this wrong view. Now, Samatha meditation is taught by the Buddha, not as a, a sufficient way for liberation, not the, not, the, not the only way for liberation, but Samatha practice um, can be a basis for Vipassana meditation, and it should be also uh, the, the basis for Vipassana meditation. Only for that purpose, uh, Buddha taught the Samatha practices. So, Samatha practices by themselves, without any uh, Vipassana meditation, cannot lead us to enlightenment. So, if we take Samatha meditations to be, to be the, the way to liberation, way to attain men of Nirvana, uh, we are we are wrong here too. Now, so among the samatha practices, there is a Buddha nosity, that is um, recollection of the Buddha or recollection of the qualities of the Buddha. That's a very good practice, and it can help us calm our minds, and when we, as, as Buddhists, when we, uh, when we are recollecting the, uh, the, the good qualities of the Buddha, say, we are happy and our minds are free from uh, say, mental defilements. But still, that is not enough for us, for the achievement of liberation. We have to practice um, uh, vipassana meditation say, to achieve that goal. So, although the, the re recollection of the Buddha and his attributes is a good practice for calming our minds down, yet it still is not enough. It is not a, uh, not a real way to the attainment of Nibbana. So we have to practice some other thing to achieve that goal. <clears throat> so also, if you think that just by praying, just by prayer, you can achieve enlightenment, then you are wrong again. Now I wish I could say that it's possible to achieve Nibbana by just just wishing for it or just praying. But the, the sodas I read gave me the opposite answer. <clears throat> so, Buddha's uh, taught in one one discourse that uh, Buddha said there are, there are five desirable, pleasant, and agreeable things which are rare in the world. And what are those five? They are long life, beauty, happiness, fame, and rebirth in a celestial realm. But of those five things, I do not teach that they are to be obtained by asking or by prayer. If one could obtain them by prayer, I mean by asking or prayer, who would not be without what in this world? That means everybody uh, would have 
everything he wants because just by praying uh, he can get whatever he wants. So continued, for a noble disciple who wishes to have long life, it is not befitting that he should uh, pray for long life or take delight in so doing. He should rather follow a path of life that is conducive to longevity. By following such a path, he will obtain long life, be it divine or human. So, now these five qualities are uh, worldly qualities, not, not uh, enlightenment, not emancipation. Even these worldly qualities you cannot achieve uh, just by praying. So Buddha said, if you want to, to, to live a long life, I mean, to, to have a long life, then you follow a path of uh, life, that means a practice, a practice of uh, kusala karma, good karma, uh, that is conducive to longevity. So you must do something to get something. You cannot get something just by praying. So it is what is taught here in this sutta. In another sutta, Buddha said, if a monk uh, wishes that his heart may be freed from mental defilements, but if he does not practice, if he does not apply himself to the development of his mind, then his heart will not be freed. That means if a monk just prays but does not uh, practice mental, mental development, then he will not uh, get what he prays for because he has not developed the mind. And then not developed in what? Not developed in the four foundations of mindfulness and so on. So Buddha said here that if you just pray say, for Nibbana, but you do not practice mindfulness and others, then you will, not, you will not get what you pray for. And then Buddha continues, if, if you do not pray for anything, if you do not pray for Nibbana, but if you practice mindfulness, then you will achieve Nibbana. So prayer is, has no no special effect on the practice. Whether you pray or not, if you practice, then you will get the result of that practice, and if you don't, you will not get the result, however much you pray. So praying is actually uh, wishing for something, and wishing for something is just, um, what do you call that? Maybe a little, give us a little consolation. Say, well, I wish for something, but um, the nibbana is not, not, not the, the state to be just wished for. We must uh, develop our minds in, in the practice of um, mindfulness so that say, we achieve our goal. So, prayer alone uh, cannot help us in any way. Even if you pray, then back it up with practice. Because sometimes we do pray, say, may I attain Nibbana or something like that. But if you just say, may I attain Nibbana and you do not do anything, then you will not get any nearer to Nibbana. So the, 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 the important thing is to practice uh, to pr and to practice the, the foundations of mindfulness or to practice Satipatthana uh, meditation or Vipassana meditation. So if you practice um, Samantha meditation like recollection of the Buddha, that means uh, remembering or repeating the attributes of the Buddha uh, time and again. That's good, 
But please do not be satisfied with just um, that kind of uh, meditation. Try to practice mindfulness meditation also so that say you can you can get rid of mental defilements. <clears throat> now um, there is a saying in especially in the Mahayana that if you wish for the Buddha land, then when at the, the moment of death, the Buddha will come to you with his disciples and take you to, uh, to the Western paradise, and you will be reborn there, something like that. And the description of that land uh, closely resembles the description of Mm. Celestial realms, Devaloka in Theravada literature. So I think that pure land cannot be Nibbana. And it is said that you will be reborn there. So if you are born there, what will follow? When there is rebirth, there is old age, and there is death. And so um, it's just another, maybe just another existence, maybe a better existence than the human existence. But still it is an existence and it is impermanent. And so um, it is not, not ultimately desirable. So the, uh, I would like to say, ask you not to be content with just uh, samatha meditation, but try to practice uh, satipatthana or vipassana meditation. So the sila buddha upadana is a wrong belief that liberation can be achieved just by the practice of sila or just by practice of vata. That means just by the practice of something uh, other than the uh, practice of mindfulness. This, uh, this grasping is translated as right, right and ritual Mm, grasping or something like that. So that is a loose translation and that can lead to uh, misunderstanding. So in, in the story, uh, behaving like a dog or behaving like a cow, it cannot be called a ritual or right. But still, if you believe that behaving like a cow or like a dog uh, leads to liberation, then th there is this uh, wrong view. So it, it, it is very difficult to translate uh, this word into English. And the commentaries always say that here sila and vata means sila of uh, dogs, sila of cows, sila of other animals, and vata of dogs, cows, and others. So not just rites and rituals. So if you take the rites and rituals or any kind of practice uh, other than the practice of uh, satipatthana and vipassana to be a sure way to liberation, then there is this kind of wrong view. The next upadana is called atta vada upadana. It is a belief in soul. So it is a belief that um, rupa is soul, it is belief that feeling is soul, or perception is soul, or mental formations are soul, or consciousness is soul, or it is a belief in a soul uh, other than these five aggregates. So according to the teachings of the Buddha, 
Mm, there is no permanent, everlasting, and unchanging soul. And the belief in that everlasting, unchanging uh, soul is called here Attawada Ubadana, the so grasping of the uh, theory of soul. According to Abhidhamma, wrong view is always accompanied by attachment or loba. You have attachment for something and then you have wrong view about it. That is why it is here said that um, conditioned by craving or attachment, grasping arises. So these four kinds of grasping, the, the first one is uh, strong attachment and the other three are the wrong view. So in brief there are two, uh, two graspings, loba and deity, attachment and wrong view. So both attachment, uh, strong attachment and wrong view are conditioned by a craving, which is again attachment. So the, the weak attachment gives rise to strong attachment, and since there is attachment, and there is wrong view with regard to the object of that attachment. So uh, th these four graspings are said to be conditioned by uh, craving or tanna. <clears throat> so there are four graspings. The one, the first is what karma. Upadana, grasping for uh, objects of senses. The second is Deity Upadana, wrong view, uh, grasp, wrong view grasping. And wrong view here means uh, not belief in uh, law of karma. And the third one is uh, Silabhata Upadana, the wrong view that Sila and Vata can lead to liberation. And the fourth is Adawada Ubadana, that is a belief in soul. So these four <coughs> craspings are conditioned by craving. And so Buddha said, um, because there is craving as condition, there is grasping. So this is the eighth. Is it the eighth? Yeah, it is the eighth link in the, the, the teaching of dependent origination. <clears throat> 